45 COVID cases added in Sheboygan County since Friday. Pair of Sheboygan County crashes under investigation. Evergreen Park Bridge to be replaced in spring. These and other local stories are coming up on this edition of Community News Review. This is Community News Review, a service of WSCS-TV, news content provided by WHBL. I'm Maddie Pfister, and this is Community News Review for Tuesday, August 11th, 2020. The Sheboygan County Division of Public Health issued its first COVID-19 report since Friday, and 45 positive test results were confirmed, 14 on Saturday, 12 on Sunday, and 19 on Monday. Recovery is numbered 36 in that same period, raising the active caseload by nine to a total of 145. Of those six are currently receiving hospital treatment for their symptoms, 228 persons in the county received good news on negative test results, yielding a three-day positive percentage rate of nearly 16, or one half percent. 189 of the 804 total confirmed cases of COVID-19 in Sheboygan County so far occurred in the 20 to 29 age group. That is 23.5% of the total. 117 cases were recorded in those 30 to 39, 116 in those 40 to 49, 113 in the 50 to 59 category, 112 in those 10 to 19 years old, and 76 have occurred in those 60 to 69. 30 in those is 70 to 79, and 26 persons 80 and older have COVID-19, and 20 were under the age of 10. Wisconsin tested 8,167 persons since Sunday, and 507, or 6.2%, were positive. The 14-day positive trend is now 6%. No persons have died of COVID-19 in the last 24 hours, leaving the death toll at 998. 31 more persons entered hospital treatment since Sunday, meaning that 8.2% of all cases have resulted in hospitalization. A total of 352 COVID-19 cases are hospitalized in Wisconsin at this time. 98 of those are in the ICU and 341 persons are being assisted by mechanic mechanical ventilation. If you need testing for COVID-19, the county DPH advises that Prevea Health has expanded its access to free testing while Advocate Aurora is short on COVID-19 supplies and will close most testing sites as well as stop testing some patients before surgery. Calumet County will offer free COVID-19 testing Tuesday through Thursday this week for anyone over the age of five with or without symptoms. Testing will be at Calumet County Fairgrounds in Chilton from 10 until 6 Tuesday and Wednesday and 9 until 5 on Thursday with no appointment needed and registration on your phone at the testing site. Today is partisan primary election day throughout the state. The Sheboygan County voters will see some state assembly and congressional races, the local contests as well. The district attorney, county clerk, treasurer, and the register of deeds will appear on the ballot. The sixth district congressional seat is up this year, where on the Republican side, incumbent Glenn Grothman is unopposed. On the Democratic side, Michael Beardsley, Matthew Bohr, and Jessica King are all on the ballot. The regular reminder about voting in Wisconsin is coming with a reminder about coronavirus. The Wisconsin Election Commission is reminding people of the rules and making a few suggestions for anyone who has plans to vote in person. 
Masks are recommended but not required. Polling places will have plenty of hand sanitizers and will be cleaned between voters. The commission says most voters will be able to keep their time on, but some voters may be asked to lower their masks to confirm who they are or who they say they are. Voter ID is required and polls opened at 7 a.m. today and are open until 8 p.m. tonight. The State Patrol is investigating a pair of crashes that happened on Monday. The first occurred at County Road C and M in the town of Wisconsin, or the town of Sheboygan Falls on Monday morning. It was around 7 a.m. when the pickup truck hit a house. One person had a back and neck injury while the other dr truck driver was cited for failure to yield the right of way. In the second accident, one person had minor injuries after a T-bone at Highway 32 and County J af Monday afternoon. The Sheboygan County Sheriff's Department says a vehicle heading west pulled out in front of the northbound vehicle on Highway 32. One of the people involved in the crash had an arm injury and the driver of the westbound vehicle was cited for failing to yield for a stop sign. You or your kids might have played on the span and it has been the picturesque setting for wedding and graduation photos, but the days of the Pigeon River Bridge in Sheboygan's Evergreen Park are numbered, destined to be replaced by a new span this coming spring. Even though sentiment abounds, the existing bridge must be removed. City Planning Director Chad Pelichek said the current bridge is not unsafe, but it is old and needs a repair. Doesn't mean that the ADA, it does not meet ADA standards and erosion is undermining its foundation. Funding for the project is from the Natural Resource Damage Assessment from the Sheboygan River Cleanup Project and as a result must be used to improve access with the Sheboygan River watershed. As a result, the new bridge will be designed with bump outs that allow people to stand off of the main path for fishing. Designs by the city for loca location and approaches are still underway. Once those are complete, the construction of the prefabricated bridge will take a few months before delivery. Although a prefab images of similar bridges are sh shown nothing Unlike the current bridge, a wooden structure with arch supports and a deck. Once delivered, construction will begin downstream of the current bridge, which will remain in place until a new one is finished sometime this coming spring. The agency is in charge of Wisconsin's online library system, and it has been spending the pandemic hoistering its collection with an emphasis on e-books. Sarah Gold with the Wisconsin Public Library Consortium says they have been bulking up their stocks of licensings to help borrow out books to libraries across the state, and I think it is close to 500,000 titles. It may not seem like that when patrons are waiting for the title, but we do have a significant amount of materials in that collection. The consortium received $250,000 in grants from the Department of Public Instruction in April, which has helped it buy several thousand new books and resources for patrons. With the money that we are able to purchase close to a thousand titles that are simultaneously used, meaning they're always available for patrons and there are no holds, Gold said. If you are looking to join up and use the digital library, you can find the Libby app on Google, Kindle, and Apple devices, or check with your local library for more information. Many libraries around the state have closed their buildings, but are offering curbside pickup and drop-off services in addition to their online services. 
And finally, infrastructure and road improvements required by the Aurora Health Sheboygan County Medical Center will affect travel on the Sheboygan's southwest side beginning Monday, and the disruption will last until mid-November. The advice notice from the Department of Street between Taylor Drive and Horseman intersection and Union Avenue westward will also occur beginning a week later on August 24th. Traffic will be re rerouted from Taylor Drive at Indiana Avenue on the north and Washington Avenue on the south side using South Business Drive. Public Works Director David Beeble asked for the public's patience and cooperation during the projects as partial closures and openings occur. They will be posted on the department's website for more information. And that is our report for today. Join me again next week for more local news and information on Community News Review. News content for this program provided by WHBL in cooperation with WSCS-TV.